Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Stata Tech, and these are the top five things I learned building my first Ethereum mining rig. Now, I have built computers in the past, so building computers isn't really new to me, but building a computer for this purpose was definitely new, and putting six GPUs on a, <laughs> on a PC was definitely something new to me. So I learned a few things along the way through this process. Now, if you wanna see my first build, uh, mining build, we've got a video up for that, so make sure to check out the link in the description below. Um, I also have parts list and a lot of information that I shared in that video, uh, including the reason why I decided to do this in the first place. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about my, uh, my kind of journey journey here in, in mining Ethereum, definitely check that video out. So the first thing that I learned is that you need to set up the computer before attaching the GPUs. Now, um, here's the problem that I ran into first. I built the entire rig without having installed anything um, yet, and that was the main problem. I fired up the computer. It didn't know what in the heck to do with all of those things that I did uh, that are typically not standard configurations. So, you know, there's going into the BIOS of your motherboard and making changes. Those were things that I should have done before connecting the GPUs. Installing Windows, installing the GPU drivers. I should have done all of those things before actually going through and uh, attaching all of the GPUs. So not that it's a big problem, it's just that it would have saved me a little bit of time had I done that right in the first place. So I recommend when you're building your mining rig, get uh, put one GPU, connect one GPU, set up Windows, uh, get your drivers and everything installed so that everything's working smoothly like a normal PC would, maybe even fire up uh, whatever, you know, Claymore or whatever you're gonna use to mine with and just see if everything works first and then go ahead, power down your computer, uh, power it back up, go into the BIOS of the motherboard, you know, enable uh, everything that needs to be enabled so that you can run multiple GPUs and that varies depending on your motherboard and then add in your GPUs. Everything should work fine the next time you fire up the computer. Um, you may have some troubleshooting to do, but nonetheless, if I had went through that process first, I would have had no issues. So the second thing is that matching GPUs makes life easier. Having one manufacturer, not only just manufacturer, but the same GPU across your rig makes things easier. And here's why. It's because the uh, the drivers only have to be one set of drivers. For example, I've seen some people do uh, a mining rig that has you know, two different manufacturers of GPUs, two different types of GPUs. Um, it just seems that there are issues there uh, just in the way that they perform and the stability. Now, um, that's just been my research. I don't have a ton of experience there, but what I do know is that when I built my rig, I built it and used all of the same GPUs, and the process was extremely simple. There was one configuration that I had to deal with. There was, when I flashed the BIOS on all of those GPUs, um, it was one process for all of them. And it was just much easier to have everything set that way. It was much easier to go and overclock because I can overclock everything the same without having to individually overclock each card, which it can be kind of a pain. Now, I get it if you're building uh, something out of a rig, out of parts that you have, extra GPUs, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be maybe more expensive to go and buy all the same GPUs, but... I learned that it is much easier that way. If I want to make a change, I can make it globally. I don't have to look at the cards individually. I can uh, adjust them collectively. Number three is keep it cool. Now, I have uh, my rig inside of an office that's about 600 square feet, and that office will stay really warm. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. It's maybe more like 800 square feet. That office will stay pretty warm with that rig uh, just sitting in there running. Um, now, uh, we're entering into winter where I'm located, and I'm going to be putting it in a shop that is enclosed, and you know, um, it, it'll get a little cold out there it's not gonna get extremely cold but during the winter time it'll probably be 40 degrees or so out there uh, Fahrenheit and it'll keep everything nice and cool um, you know it's uh, I'm gonna put a little gauge in there just to kind of keep uh, control of the moisture in the air um, it is a sealed shop so I'm not worried about it there's no way that water or really any heavy moisture is gonna come in but I'm gonna keep tabs on that 
And the reason that I want to keep it cool is because one of the issues that you run into um, is overheating and overheating can affect the stability of your unit or your mining rig. And uh, I want to be able to get the most performance I can out of it. I don't want to have to heavily air condition and pay even more electricity. So now I can take advantage of the fact that the weather for the next probably four or five months is going to be relatively cold. Um, I can keep it cool. And then, uh, you know, when it starts to warm back up, I live in an area that does get up to 100 degrees in the summer, I can move it back indoors and run the air conditioner to keep it cool that way. So that way I'm not, you know, constantly having to keep it cool with air conditioning. I'm taking advantage of the elements that uh, exist where, where I reside. Number four is to optimize your system and the GPUs out of the box. Most GPUs are not at full hashing potential. Um, now, I realize that because I did a bit of research, but I did want to see where they were going to perform out of the box. And mine were not performing out of the box where I thought they should. Um, so I've been doing some troubleshooting, trying to figure out what is causing the GPUs that I have not to perform uh, where they should even stock out of the box. Um, now, once optimized, you're going to get a lot more performance out of them. And what's really cool is if you modify the BIOS, uh, and there are even a few other changes that you can make, you can actually get a lot more performance out of your GPUs without increasing your power consumption very much at all. If you've seen anybody else's videos online showing uh, the wattage, uh, the watt consumption out of a GPU before and after the BIOS being modified, you can see that they're getting a lot more performance out of those GPUs without even using up that much more electricity. So you wanna optimize as best as you can because after you build the rig and and recuperate the cost of the rig's parts, your only real expense is your electricity. And the electricity is a, an expense just like putting gas in your car is. And so you wanna get the best mileage out of that as possible. If you're deciding to take a road trip, you're probably gonna to wanna to take a road trip in a car that gets good gas mileage versus some big vehicle that has some monster engine in it that sucks down a ton of fuel. It's just not very economical. Same thing goes for a mining rig. You're going to want to get the best performance out of your mining rig for that electricity that's being consumed because that's going to get you the best return on investment. Number five is to be patient. It's easy to want to try different things, uh, but the best route is just to let an optimized rig run. Now, every time that you make any changes or decide to tune or do anything, you're definitely you know, going to have to maybe shut things down, restart. You're going to have some downtime. And once you've gotten your rig to a level of optimization that seems good and stable, just let it run. Don't get crazy with continuously trying to optimize, making changes, spending time running it so close to the edge that it becomes unstable and then it shuts down on you in the middle of the night so you lose out on hours of mining. I mean, there's lots of issues that can happen there. So what you want to find is a good, um, I don't want to say happy medium because that's kind of a you know, I want it to be more on the on the bleeding edge than that as far as performance goes. But you you definitely don't want to spend so much time messing with it that you take away from the time that it could be mining, uh, especially right now, considering things are are just moving so fast right now. Um, you want to get your rig up and running. You want to get it optimized to a point where it is performing well and then let it run, let it run for a while and do its job so that you can start to earn uh, and you know recover some of the uh, expenses out of that rig. Um, some people spend way too much time optimizing and going over and over, uh, you know, and having system crash and stuff like that, um, having the drivers fail on their system and then things freeze. I mean, there's, <laughs> I see people trying things all the time. And while it's great to read and I'm glad that they put this stuff up because I've been able to learn from it, I also see a lot of opportunities lost there for them because they admit to their, you know, rig being down for eight hours or whatever, um, or, you know, they wasted an entire day uh, of their time. And, and for me, I don't have an entire day that I want to waste. I want to get it optimized. I want to get it up and running. And I kind of want to go on with my life. I don't want this to consume me. 
So those are the five things that I've learned building my first mining rig to mine Ethereum. Uh, things are gonna change. Things are changing fast in cryptocurrency right now. Um, so who knows what's to happen. But if you want to kind of keep up to date with what I'm doing, definitely uh, follow along here. Click on that subscribe button uh, because that will get you updates when we put out new videos. We don't only do videos about, G or about mining with uh, GPUs, mining Ethereum or whatever, but um, we definitely would love to have you along for the ride. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. And then of course, uh, definitely, you know, leave your thoughts. I mean, not just questions, but if you have thoughts on what I'm doing and maybe even any tips because I'm still new to this, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for checking out our video here on State of Tech. Hope to see you back soon.